Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Welcome everyone to Tuesday Live Bible Study. I'm so excited to join you this evening that you are with us for this amazing time of the Word together live here in Colorado. It's snowing like crazy, and so we're excited to be able to share this evening with you. I'm Carrie Pickett, and I'm gonna be your host this evening. And uh, this is a live Bible study, which means we get to interact with you. And it's one of our favorite parts of doing the live Bible study is that we're getting to know you from a distance. And that's what we love. And wherever you are in your home is being able to hear the word. So the way you can interact with us is that we actually take live uh, questions and we try to get through as many of them as possible with answers from our amazing teachers every day of the week when we do this. And so to be able to interact with us this evening, whatever form that you're watching on, go down to the chat section. And in that chat section, there's going to be a space where you can write in your questions. So send those in, and then I'm going to be able to share those uh, and get those questions answered at the end. We're gonna have about 35, 40 minutes of teaching, and then we're gonna take, well, 30 minutes of teaching, and then about 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. Whatever questions that we don't get to, not only on Tuesday evening, evenings, but in our live Bible study lineup, that's Monday through Friday, Monday and Fridays at 10 in the morning, Tuesday, Thursdays are in the evening at six o'clock, like you are joining us tonight. And then Wednesday is six o'clock in the morning seven o'clock in the morning. Look, I just gave you an hour of sleep back. Seven o'clock in the morning, you get to join us for those live Bible studies. And when we take those questions, whatever we don't get to, we gather them up kind of in a roundup of questions. And then every Tuesday afternoon, I know today Barry Bennett met with you and answered questions. And what we do is we take those questions, either Barry Bennett, Greg Moore, Rick McFarland, there's some of our amazing teachers here at Karis Bible College. They will go through more of those questions. So that is a another chance to hear your questions getting answered. So go to Andrew Womack Ministries Facebook page, hit like, and then that will bring you uh, all of that live content that we're going to do every Tuesday for more Q&A. So join us for that. Also, the way that you can interact with us as well as through those Q&A, but also we have all of our prayer ministers standing by. Our prayer ministers love the word. They love the Lord. They hear the Lord's voice and they want to join with you in prayer. Whatever you're going through, they want to be able to minister to you. So call into our prayer line and they will be able to minister to you and that aspect as well as if you're saying, hey, I'm going through something and I just, what does the word say? Do you guys have material? They're going to be able to resource you, be able to reference you to all the material that we have, including on awmi.net. We have over 200,000 hours of free material that you can load and learn and listen to, which will change your life. I just listening to a testimony this week about somebody getting a hold of Andrew's free material on the site and just downloaded everything and the way it radically changed their lives. Supernatural healing. She got healed after 11 years of suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, just listening to the word and it healed her. So I'm going to encourage you get into the word and be able to listen to that. So I am so excited about that. Also, one of the things we do special on Tuesdays that we don't do on any other night is that we actually have a free drawing. And so every Tuesday we have one of Andrew's products or one of our guest ministers that is ministering. So tonight we have harnessing, uh, excuse me, not harnessing, hardness of heart. We also have a book, Harnessing Your Emotions, but hardness of heart. This is amazing. It's a small book, but I remember uh, when when we were teaching this in Russia, people would go, they'd read it and they get to the end and they're like, I didn't even know I had a hard heart. And it was, that was a revelation. If you realize if there's an area of your heart that's hard, then this reveals it so that God can truly soften it and bring transformation. So I'm gonna encourage you, call our prayer line. Last week we had, uh, last week's winner, uh, got how to find, follow, and fulfill God's will. That is a tremendous book by Andrew. I'm gonna encourage that. And Carl, Pazaza, you won that. So Carl, we're gonna get that book out to you and that's gonna be a tremendous blessing. Before I welcome our minister this evening, one last thing, we've got some amazing things happening here at Karis Bible College and we want to sincerely invite you to be a part of some of the amazing things that are getting ready to happen on campus. So one of the things is our campus days, that's gonna be April 6th through the 8th. Campus days is one of our most 
dynamic conferences. All of our conferences are dynamic, but I love Campus Day because we just talk about the Word. And if you are interested, if you've ever had any interest in knowing more about Karis Bible Study, Karis Bible School, or any family member that says, I need to study the Word of God, I'm going to encourage you to come out, see our campus, see what God is doing here on campus, meet our students, meet our instructors, and find out how you can be a part of Karis Bible College. So check that out. Also, the same time we're doing a David King of Jerusalem. So you can come for the conference and then you can see one of our world class performances. And I'm going to encourage you, it is phenomenal. So that's gonna be the eighth through the 10th. So you're able to stay, have a great time here with us in Colorado. If you want more information Information or know how to buy those tickets, go to awmi.net slash events. So, all right, well, uh, the privilege I have tonight is introducing my husband and uh, woohoo! And so Mike is gonna minister, well, actually we're gonna minister together. You know, we really love teaching the word together. That's just been something we've done in our 16 years of marriage. Amen. And we've really loved it. Uh, and sometimes we get so excited, we're like, hurry, hurry, I have something to say. It's just awesome how God does it. So we have some great things to share with you tonight. So I'm going to kick this over to you and you guys are going to be blessed this evening. Awesome. Well, thank you, Carrie. I'm, I'm, isn't she beautiful? I'll ah. tell you, I just, <laughs> He's uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed and so <laughs> privileged to uh, have such an amazing wife who, who loves the Lord and loves the Word and loves you, loves me. And <laughs> praise the Lord. It's, it works. Uh, two out of three stop at now. <laughs> no, um, but we're, as Carrie mentioned, we're really privileged and excited to be able to share the Word with you this evening. And one thing that um, I believe that both of us are realizing more and more is that truly is the Word of God that empowers us to overcome. Amen. Amen. all the attacks of the enemy, everything that this world throws at us, it doesn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. As long as we stay focused on the Word of God, I'll tell you, we're always going to come out victorious. And mm -hmm. so today we want to talk with you today today about um, walking in the Spirit and, uh, and, and truly overcoming the flesh. You know, um, if you look around, if you, if, you read, if you read the newspaper, if you're watching any part of the news, I'll tell you, it's so easy to get caught up in the flesh right now, whether you're fearful or or frustrated, frustrated, concerned <laughs> about the future. You know, Carrie and I having a history in Russia. Um, we're we're praying a lot for our Russian brothers and sisters as well as for our U Ukrainian brothers and sisters. Yeah. Because we know that this everything that's happening right now is just an attempt of the enemy to distract people from their true calling. And it's important that we all have the the proper perspective throughout this season, throughout this time, that we stay fixed and focused upon the Word of God, and we not allow anything to draw us away from the calling that the Lord has on our lives. And I'll tell you something, it's so easy to get caught up in the flesh and try to overcome the world through harnessing our emotions and through, through not allowing our flesh and be focused on our flesh. When the reality is, is that God has, Jesus already overcame everything this world mm -hmm. has to throw at him by walking after the spirit. The same spirit that was in Jesus is now on the inside of you and I. And God has given us that same ability to overcome the world around us by simply walking after the spirit. And I start off in Galatians chapter five, verse 16. This is a powerful principle and it's a relatively simple principle in terms of, um, uh, communicating it, but in terms of walking it out, it can be a little bit more difficult. In Galatians chapter five and verse 16, it says something very, it says this very simply. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I'll tell you, this is Jesus speaking. And this is a promise that he's given you and I, that if we'll focus on who we are in the spirit, because he understood that the same spirit that was in the, on the inside of him is on the inside of you and I, that that was going to be the, that was going to be the legacy that he left behind for you and I. And he understood the power that he experienced as he focused on the, the spirit of God living on the inside of him. And the fact that he could overcome anything this, this world was throwing at him, the, the, uh, the traitorous heart of man, the, the, the deceitfulness of riches and of, into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. He understood that as he walked after the, the spirit, he could overcome all these attacks uh, uh, that, was gonna be, that were gonna be thrown at him in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, like I said before, oftentimes what we'll do is we'll try, to, we'll try to pull back, we'll try to do our best to be the best fleshly creatures that we possibly can. And God said, hey, listen, I haven't given you power in your flesh. I've given you power in your spirit. Mm -hmm. As you focus and fix your eyes upon who you are in the spirit, and we're going to talk about what that actually means to do that. But as you truly do walk after the spirit, 
you're automatically not going to walk after the flesh. You're automatically going to walk in the principles that God has laid out in the word, his word for us. Now, what does that mean to walk after the spirit? And what, what, what is there? How do we identify the fact that we're walking after the Spirit? If you go down a little bit further in Galatians chapter 5, starting in verse 22, it talks about what is the fruit of the Spirit? What, what, are we, what do we expect to see as we're walking after the Spirit? And these are some powerful principles. These are, these are, these are things, these are fruits that we all are desiring after. And this is a clear-cut indicator of that we are walking after the Spirit. It says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. I'll tell you, this, these are powerful. You know, when, when wars and rumors of war start hitting us from all sides, it's important that we have peace. When people are not lovely to us, it's important that we have love. When Im impatience is the rule of the day, when we want things, we want things an hour ago, it's important that we walk in patience so that, and we, that we demonstrate that this is the kingdom of God, that these are the principles that Jesus died to give you and I. And as we walk after the spirit, we're going to be fulfilling all these different fruits. We're going to see them manifested in our lives. I'll tell you something, if you are walking in frustration, if you're walking in fear, if you're walking in intolerance, you know what that tells me? It tells me that you're walking after the flesh. It's, it's a, it, it tells you that, that you put somewhere in your life, you put your trust in the flesh. In order, to, in order for us to, to transition back to walking in victory, we simply turn our eyes back upon the spirit, discovering who we are, discovering all that God has given us in his word so that we can, be, we, we can begin to walk after those principles that Jesus died to give you and I. You know, one of the things that really made a difference for me, and even though I grew up, you know, hearing, you know, how we were righteous in Christ and, and that we were loved of God, was loved of God and heard the grace message. It wasn't until Bible school that I really got an understanding of what it meant to walk in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because again, that felt, that felt like I had to walk in perfection. So when I was a teenager, walking in the spirit was me walking in perfection, yeah. right? And me like everything was right and everything was good and I was doing all the right thing. That's what it meant to walk in the spirit. But here's the thing that we that is truly made a difference for me of knowing what that looked like was the dynamic of when I, when it talks about walking in the spirit, right? It's not talking about performance. It's not talking about perfection. It's not talking about how much I read, how much I pray, how much I study, how much I fast. That's not walking in the spirit. Yeah. That's that's uh, can be a reflection of the spirit, but that's not the definition of walking in the spirit. And this is really, really important. And when I understood that when I got born again, when I received Jesus into my heart, the spirit of God came to live inside of me. See, that's, that was the, the revelation that I didn't have. I, and yes, I knew that Jesus lived in me, but it was like this dynamic of like, I received Jesus and now I've really got to earn and keep and maintain and he's out there and I'm in here and I'm trying to show him versus this revelation of no, I'm filled with the spirit. Yeah. And that because you have the spirit of God, not a spirit, you have the spirit of God. You hear me and Mike talk about this in the in, in other uh, times that we've ministered. You don't have a, a baby Jesus, you know, you have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living inside of you. So that, actually is a huge uh, chunk of this revelation. It's actually the starting point of this revelation. If we're gonna walk in the spirit, it's understanding that the spirit lives within us. We're not trying to pursue, run after it, get it, attain it. It's actually something you and I've already attained in Christ is that we are filled with the spirit of God. So then if we're filled with the spirit of God, well, why do we struggle then? Well, because again, not only are you filled with the spirit, you also are a soul and you also have a body. So that's why when we talk about spirit, soul and body, when Andrew ministers that, and I'm gonna tell you, call our prayer line tonight and ask them for that resource. Check out anything on AWM that, that talks about spirit, soul and body. It is a life changing revelation because it shows that yes, you are now wall to wall. One third of you is full of the kingdom of God, the perfection, the righteousness, the spirit, of God, but you also have a soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and you have your flesh. Yeah. And our flesh is this tie to this world, right? And it's a way we can touch and change this world, but it's also the tie that tries to pull us into the worldly mentalities. And our soul, our mind, will, and our emotions, that's our key. 
that really is the key of how do we walk after the Spirit? What are you placing your mind on? Are you placing your mind on only the flesh, the natural, your emotions, your feelings, your passions, your lust, your desires, and everything that's hitting you? Or are we setting it on something bigger? And that's the salvation of what Christ not only died to give you, but he died to come and live within you. Amen. And that right there for me was the key for me getting out of this performance. Like I've got to walk in the spirit. I've got to be good. I've got to be this great. You got to be a perfect daughter and perfect, you know, church attender and perfect everything. You can't drink and smoke and chew and go with those who do, right? I was just so like trying to be perfect. Just even as a, as a little girl, but when I got that revelation coming to Bible school that I had the Spirit of God in me that never left me and forsook me, then all of a sudden how I changed what I yeah. focused on completely changed. And everything, then victory started like happening in the fruit in my Amen. physical, earthly, fleshly life. Amen. I didn't, like I said, focus on the things of spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. All of a sudden it didn't have that power over me because I knew I had someone, not something, someone bigger living inside of me. And that, that's a powerful principle. Oftentimes what we do is we think that we can start off in our flesh, something good and it transitions over to our spirit and becomes our lifestyle. Mm. And the reality is, is that everything that, that's good in our lives has come from the Lord and was deposited in our, into our spirits first. And we begin to focus on what God has done for us. It changes everything. We understand that everything that we need for life and victory comes through the knowledge of Him because it's already been placed on the inside of us. It truly is powerful for us. And it, it's, it's life transforming and allowing us to walk in the victory that God has, has ordained for us to walk in. If you look over in Ephesians chapter 4, <clears throat> I'll tell you again, this is, these are powerful scriptures. And I'll just say this, the entire word is full of powerful scriptures. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we stay fixed and focused upon the word. But in Ephesians chapter four, verse 24, it says this, it says, it was, well, going back to verse 22, it, starting off there, it says, and that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to, to the deceitfulness of lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, verse number 24, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that, that again, that our new man on the inside of us is righteous and is, and is created in true holiness. You know, as Carrie was just sharing there, it's so easy for us to focus on the flesh, focus on fasting, focus on praying, and there's nothing wrong with those mm -hmm. things. But that's not our, where our attention is. Our <clears throat> attention goes back to understanding the word, understanding what God has, has ordained in our lives, understanding who we are in Christ Jesus. And from that, that overflow is gonna, is gonna develop into fasting, into praying, into the, those works of righteousness that we, we saw earlier, the, the, the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the patience, the, the meekness, gentleness, kindness, all those things are an overflow of, what, of who we are in the spirit. When we focus on the other things, it brings us right back to the captivity of the flesh, thinking that we're motivating God to give us these gifts of faith, to give us these gifts of love because our actions are so good. And I'll tell you something, guys, there's nothing that you and I can do to earn any, anything good from the Father. It's, it's, Jesus has already earned all those things for you and I and then presented them to, to you and I as our inheritance, like it says in Ephesians chapter one, how that we, you and I have received an inheritance from Jesus. And it goes on to say that once we've been given his spirit, that we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And again, the, it's, it's really important for us to understand that, that we need to get our eyes off of the flesh, off of who we are in the flesh, off the circumstances that are hitting us and get it onto the spirit and to begin to adapt the way we think and the way that we perceive things and start looking at things according to the principles in the word of God. When we start doing that, those, those same principles that, that are promises to us in the word become our reality, become the way that we live. We start walking in peace. We start walking in joy. We start being fruitful. But when we, when we go back and focus on the flesh, and, and this, I'll just say, we take ourselves captive again. And this is easy to fall into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's easy to go back to the, the aspect of, of trying to work hard for your salvation, trying to work hard to prove to God that <clears throat> you are worthy uh, to be yeah. considered to, mm -hmm. to be the temple of the living God. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that God's never, with the exception of Jesus, God has never had anyone worthy working for him yet. It's always, it's always been a gift of grace. It, yeah. You know, if God's going to use us, it's because God's good, not because we are. Yeah. And as we submit to him, I'll tell you something, it's amazing 
the the impact that in that an infallible, incredible, all good God can have on us and transform us in such a way where we can we can be a light and a salt on this earth and show His goodness to the people around us. When, what, what Mike was just talking about, the aspect of inheritance and just this inheritance that we possess now as children of God and that in the spirit. You know, what I love about, again, going back, talking about spirit, soul, and body and this dynamic of if we are filled with God, then why do we still struggle with the things of this world? Why aren't we walking in our full inheritance? Like if God's been so good and his work was so profound and it was so extensive, well, then why do we still struggle? Well, because it's about relationship that he can, we can invite Jesus into our heart, but then we get to choose daily what we set our mind on and what our focus is. Um, what I love about in this in Romans chapter eight um, in verse five, and this is always such a great indicator, like what Mike was talking about, talking about the fruit of the spirit. And if you're frustrated and you're angry, it's, it's showing you you're not in the spirit because it's not matching up with the character and nature of the Holy Spirit. In verse five, it says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. And he says, but those who live according to the spirit set their mind on the things of the spirit. It says, listen, you're going to live directly based on what you set your mind on. And if we're going to walk after the spirit, then we have to say, yes, I want this fruit and I want this reflection of Christ and I want this fruit. And of course I want patience and kindness and love and mercy, but you're not going to get that if you're just filling your mind up with the garbage of this world. If you're never renewing it to something that's bigger, something more, which is who you are in Christ. And so truly that whole, what you set your mind on, that's what you're going to then be consumed by. They always talk, uh, Andrew always talks about this. You know, he said, if you get a black dog and a white dog, he said, who's gonna win if they get in a fight? He said, who's gonna win? And Everybody, of course, because it's Andrew, you think it's a cr trick question, <laughs> you know, like uh, the black one, is that sin? Is, you know, you're like always thinking of this. And he said, no, the, which dog is gonna win between the white one or the black one is whichever one you feed. Which whenever is, is what you feeding it, it's gonna have the strength. So if you're feeding the flesh, then that's exactly the strength of the flesh. It's that lust and it's the temptation, it's those desires, it's those passions, it's those, you know, your flesh flashes as we call them in our house, where you just like, bah, you know, because that's what you're sensitive to. And so what we're consuming, right, in this world, and that's where it gets to be about your relationship with God. It's yep. not your pastor's yep. job. It's not my job, it's not Andrew's job. It's not anyone's job around you to make sure you're walking in the spirit, that you have your <laughs> mind focused on the things of God. That's actually the privilege and the responsibility that you and I have to say, okay, what am I going to allow in the gate of my heart yep and what, b before my eyes and what am I gonna listen to? And if you're listening to everything that's negative, doubtful, fearful, uh, you know, it, everything's gonna go be bad. Everything's gonna continue to get worse and everybody, you know, is, is dumb around you. Well, then that's exactly what you think and believe and see and feel because that's what you're putting inside of you. But if you can shut off the news and shut off the radio and shut off the voices that are speaking all those things to you and spend time in the word, then that's all of a sudden what you become sensitive to. And that's what you, where your faith latches onto. It's like, no, I believe what God's word has said. And so I love this in Romans chapter eight, verse five, you set your mind on the things of the spirit, you will walk in the spirit. You set your mind on the things of the flesh, you will walk after the flesh. It's just that simple, you guys. So when people say, I just don't know how to get out of sin. Well, you stop focusing on it. You're gonna have to turn and face something different. Mm -hmm. That's why it says, flee youthful lust and pursue righteousness, godliness, and peace. Yeah. You know, the, the word of God really and truly is the answer for so many things. And I'll just say this, if you look over in John chapter six, yeah. verse 63, um, Jesus said something, he said something really powerful. He says this, he says, it is the spirit that quickens and that, that word quickens it actually means to bring life. Mm. So it's the spirit that quickens. Good. It goes on to say the flesh profits nothing. And so oftentimes people think, well, what does that mean? And the reality is, is that when the word says the flesh profits nothing, it means the flesh profits nothing. That word nothing means nothing. He goes on to say, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. 
And as Carrie was just saying, which one are we feeding? Which one are we going to feed on a daily basis? Is the Word of God going to become the way that we see this world? Is it going to become our, our glasses and, and, our, and our lens through which we see everything around us? Or are we going to trust in the flesh? Are we going to trust in the matters that we can, we can handle ourselves and say, Lord, no, it's okay, I've got this. I, I can handle this. I can harness my, my, my emotions. I can control myself. I can be nice to, uh, I can be a good father. Or I can be a good mother. I can be a good spouse in my own strength. Or are we going to trust in the Lord for that transformation on a heart level to truly take place? You know, uh, for another teaching for a different time, I'll tell you the word is so important. It's so important that we lock ourselves in. And if you look at all the different promises in the, in the word of God, they're there to give us peace, to give us joy, to give us the fruit of the spirit. But oftentimes what we'll do as believers is that we'll run, to, when, when we have a crisis in our lives, we'll run to the word to get a quick fix and we won't habitually stay there and allow that paradigm of the word of God to become the way that we see the world around us. And, that's, and, th and that's, that's good to get us through the moment, but if it's gonna be a lifelong transformation, then we have to change the way we think. We have to change through the word of God, like it says in Romans chapter 12, verse two, where it says, uh, where Paul says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that, that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. I'll tell you that comes through, tr the understanding the will of God, the perfect will of God comes through the, the transformation of our mind through the word understanding who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. understanding what Jesus died to give us, to give you and I. Not just running there when, we're, when we lack peace or running there when we lack direction. You know, so many times different people come to us and they say, I just don't know what the next step in my life is. I don't, I'm not quite sure what to do. Well, you know what that tells me? That tells me that you're not making the Word of God a priority in your life. Because if you were, you would be led by the Lord. You, it, it, that becomes your paradigm. That becomes the, the way that the Lord leads you. And you, you rest in peace. You rest in the joy of understanding that all my days were written in his book before I ever lived one. And it's important that we, we, have made, we make the word, um, which is our life, as, as Jesus said in John 6, 63, if the flesh profits nothing, then it's important that we don't put any trust in the flesh. And if the words that Jesus speaks to us, they are spirit and they are life, then we don't go outside of the word of God to just truly discover uh, what is the life that God has intended for you and I to live. And this goes us back, this brings us back to the aspect of truly trust, uh, not uh, walking in, in the spirit and not trusting in the flesh. Because yeah. as we're doing that more and more, I'll tell you, doors will open wide open mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. The, the Lord will open those doors and those doors that he opens to us, no man can close. Yeah. Well, we have so many questions actually this evening, and I think that um, there's more things that we can share mm -hmm. as we answer these questions. Would be okay to do that? Absolutely. All right. So um, I, I like this question. Uh, Justin on YouTube asked us. He said, "When walking, when walking in the Spirit, is that the same thing as saying keeping your mind set on God, and heart sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Not so much certain actions, but a continuous way of being." Well, I would say I would say yes in in a manner. I mean, I think that's certainly is part of it, mm -hmm. you know, because people can keep their mindsets on set on God and, and not trust Him. They can they can think that God's against them. They they can think that God has has ordained difficulties to come at them and and uh, put obstacles in their path, put sickness in their path to teach them lessons. It's important that we we rightly divide our relationship with God by the Word of God. And so we're focusing upon him, we're walking after him. And it's, it's awesome. The Bible says in Isaiah that, um, I believe it's in Isaiah ch uh, chapter 23, that God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. And um, it, it's important that we do keep our mind stayed upon him, but we relate to God based upon who we are in, in the new covenant, based upon what Jesus has given us, based upon the gospel. Because when we do that, it changes how our outlook of, of the Lord you know, in Hebrews chapter four, and I've been really delving into Hebrews lately. It's been, it's, I've been listening to it. I've been uh, going through it and reading it. And, and it's just been really speaking a lot to me. It actually says that, that, that the gospel did not profit the children of Israel um, because it was not mixed with faith. Um, and that you and I have to mix the gospel with faith in order for us, for us to walk in the principles that God has for us. Mm -hmm. And so understand that the gospel is key. And it goes on in, in that whole chapter, in that whole chapter is talking about entering into his rest. 
And so many people have not entered into the rest of the mm -hmm. Lord and they're battling with God. They're battling with their flesh. They're battling with their circumstances around them because they're not trusting in the gospel. They're not trusting in the word. And so I would say, yes, absolutely. It's so important. Um, walking in the spirit is having our mind fixed upon the Lord, but also as Carrie had mentioned earlier, it's walking in the principles of understanding that we are who we are in Christ because the same spirit that lives in Jesus now lives on the inside of you and I, and that's how we, we relate to God. Okay, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's her way of saying you're taking too long to answer these questions. <laughs> Okay, finally. <laughs> anyway, Leah asks on chat. This I, is live TV right here, guys. <laughs> I can completely relate, says Leah, trying to uh, walk out perfection. Instead of, and instead of getting frustrated and disappointed with myself when I mess up, how should I respond when I get in the flesh? And so... I'll let you answer that question. <laughs> So yeah, Leah, I, I get it when you're trying to, to do things in perfection. And, and, and when we talk about perfection, you can put it in so many ways. You're trying to be perfect in your relationship with God. And then you're trying to walk out perfection to your spouse or perfection as a parent. And so we have all these categories of perfection. And sometimes we don't think I'm, we're in religious perfection, but we're still trying to live up to other people's expectations. And so whether they're expectations you think God's put on you, you've put on yourself or others have put on you, one of the things you have to be really careful of is that you continue to submit yourself to the Lord. And I'll just tell you, there'll be days that you are just glorious. You're just absolutely majestic. It is like, wow, Lord, I am called. And then there's <laughs> other days you're like, am I saved, right? It is, it's really true. And because you, you feel like there's kind of this up and down, and that is also because there's so many times that we're setting our mind on the things of the spirit and then we set our mind on the things of the flesh. And then, so I'm gonna encourage you that when you make a failure, when you find yourself at that spot of like, oh man, I disappointed, you know, it's running to the Lord. It says actually in Hebrews, it talks about we run boldly to the throne room of grace to receive mercy and grace in our time of need. And I'll tell you, when you make mistakes, you understand that you're righteous and your righteousness is what draws you back to the word, draws you back to your relationship with God and say, Lord, even though I failed or maybe I think I failed someone else, Lord, could you show me how you see me? That's why this time in the word is so important because it's constantly showing you who you are. Amen. Amen. All right, let me jump into the next question. Um, it says, um, uh, Char said this on chat, she says, Mike, I agree with not being caught up in this world's chaos. Should a Christian take the food shortage warning seriously and prepare for what this is or what is wrong or is that wrong for us to do? And got a number of questions like there's just so many recommendations of things of the world of what they're saying to do. Is that walking after the flesh? You know, and this goes back to your relationship with God and being led by him. You know, the part of the, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to show you those things which are to come. And mm -hmm. I think that the Holy Spirit is going to give us wisdom how to conduct ourselves through trying difficult times. Because mm -hmm. I do believe that there is a wisdom that God can give us if he tells you to be ready for a situation, then it's not prudent and it's not, it's not obedience not to be ready. But if you're doing it, doing things out of base, out of fear, thinking, how am I going to survive without this? Then that's a, that's a really clear cut indicator that you're not walking after the spirit, that you're walking after the flesh. But if you're doing things, acting in peace, and I'm, I'm talking about real peace, not just saying, this is what I'm doing so that I can be a blessing to this person or this group, or, or I'm just being prepared because what God wants me to be, be prepared. No, seek the Lord for those different things and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart and lead you into that time. Then you stay in peace. You're, you're blessed because you're staying on the word. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. What you do is a result of the motivations of your heart. And, it, and if you're being motivated through your relationship with God, then, then have confidence in that. But if you don't have confidence because you feel like you're acting in the flesh, well, then go back and ask to bring that to the Lord and allow Him, him to, give, to give you clarity. That's good. So Jacqueline on Facebook asked us, she says, why is it when I'm focusing on Christ, something is always trying to distract me? Well, that is absolutely the Christian life right there because I'll tell you right now, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in fact, he says that he'll try to come immediately to steal the word that is sown. Sometimes people think that like if I'm in church, well then immediately means that once I drive out of the parking lot, you know, someone's gonna cut me off and, and my kids are gonna spill the Coke in the back and like, ah, all chaos. No, sometimes even in the middle of the teaching, yeah. right? In the middle, the devil's saying, that's not for 
you. You could never have that. God doesn't see you that way. So understand that, they, that you have an accuser of the brethren, right? And it's the devil. So if we just understand that there's going to be distractions that come, you actually start to learn to recognize and be sensitive to those. And sometimes the distractions are actually legitimate things. You know, the, the kids are screaming downstairs and then the doorbell. And, and so it's just figuring out how to keep your heart in peace. And uh, when I, I think I've shared this before, sometimes I'll be in the Word and I have my journal and I have notes, but I have my day timer right next to me. So if I remember something like, oh my gosh, I got to email that person and oh my gosh, I got to pick up milk. That's not fleshly, guys. That's just living in life, just life, being a mom, being a wife, being a, a business owner, being a husband. Guys, there's just things that come. So what you do and what I do is I'll just be like, oh, thank you, Lord. In fact, I have a list that the Holy Spirit reminded me of when Mike was talking. The Holy Spirit reminded me of three things. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. So I wrote them down and then I listened again. So that's just this way of being able to be in this world, but not be of it. Like those things don't have to steal your joy and steal your peace. You just figure out ways how to mitigate it. Even yeah. if it's like, okay, guys, I'm serious, 20 minutes, Everybody shut the doors. Don't, do not come talk to me. You know, I am going into the bathroom and I'm reading my Bible. Do not bother me. You just figure out ways yeah. to do it. And, and just don't be condemned because the enemy's going to try to tell you how you're not serving God perfectly. Yeah. And God absolutely loves you. And he's ready to help you on this journey. You know, Carrie and I always say this and just really quickly, um, that every single attack the enemy throws at you is to distract you from understanding who you are in the Lord, distract you from the Word, distract you from your calling. And so it's important to understand that we live in this world, we're not of this world. And so we have to deal with the things around us, but we bring our relationship into everything we do. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's what Jesus said. So really focusing on understanding that and, and, and focusing on understanding that if there's a distraction, it's from the enemy or it's from this world. Mm -hmm. And you bring God into every single part of your life, including yeah. those distractions that are trying to pull you away, away from whatever it is you might be trying to focus on. Yeah, that's good. So JR on uh, Facebook says this, how am I supposed to put God first over so many other things in the world uh, that I have learned growing up not in ministry? And so, you know, everybody's got a different story. You know, I didn't grow up in ministry. I did grow up in church, but I didn't necessarily grow up in ministry. So here's the thing, you can have all kinds of, of different life experiences, but ultimately at the end of the day, you come to a place of just saying, Lord, I, I surrender. And you know, when we put Christ first in, and I've had, we, there's lots of questions like, is, uh, you know, Samaya asked this, you know, is it bad to like check my email and, you know, be hungry and, and am I supposed to stay so solely 100% 24 hours a day on the Holy Spirit? There is a, a, a relationship with God that is something that's more than just this work. So I read my three chapters in the Bible and like I can't have any, I can't like do anything that's non-spiritual. But it's this aspect of how do you invite the Spirit into your life? And I was sharing with the students the other day, the way that you truly surrender is you realize your life doesn't belong to you. See, so many times you're trying to categorize, this belongs to God and this belongs to me. Okay, and this belongs to God and this belongs to me. And then it's not like that, actually every part. So my marriage belongs to God, my children belong to God, my home belongs to God, yep. my schedule, the laundry, hallelujah, belongs to God. So it's just figuring out, Lord, how do I have the right perspective and attitude of this season of my life? And then also saying, okay, there may be things that are in this world and maybe you work a secular job, maybe you're surrounded by secular people. Guys, there's ways you, you can be talking to the Lord continually Right, and there's this whole aspect of you know uh, another question that had come in about uh, willpower and how do you stay in the Word and you know how do you stay in the Word? I'll tell you right now, I don't walk around with my Bible glued to my face every day, of of every hour of every minute of every day. But what I do is I take time to hide it in my heart and then I pull it out to meditate on it. I pull it out to think on it as I'm doing stuff. I ask the Holy Spirit. I Ask the Holy Spirit, could you remind me to think on the Word? Holy Spirit, would you remind me to pray in tongues? Holy Spirit, would you bring to my attention who I'm supposed to pray for? And then if I'm just sensitive to the Holy Spirit, He keeps reminding me. And then if I'm in the flesh or in the, oh, in the frustration, I'll be like, Harry, that's not my heart. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. So you just, it's, it's about an invitation, I think. That's the biggest thing. Absolutely. And I, I would say this as well, you know, um, 
it's very much, and, and I fall into this trap all the time, and I'm learning to renew my mind, because a lot of these things are newer revelations that God's giving me. It's very much an Old Testament mentality to look at, this is my life and this is, mm -hmm. this is serving God. Because uh, Old Testament was all about what you did to be in relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, that he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit, one spirit. We've been joined unto the Lord. And so we don't go back to the word to, to teach us what we have to do to get to be, to get into relationship with God. We go back to the word to, to change the way we think in an internally process, to understand that God is always with us, that we're one with the Father, that he and I are in this covenant relationship together. And wherever I go, whatever I do, I, it, there's the potential there that God is working through me, that mm -hmm. I can become a transformational agent into every part of society that, that, the God, that God leads me into. And I'll tell you something, as we understand that more and more, we understand that where, as we walk, as we do different things, as we conduct our daily business, as we go shopping, we become conduits for God to work through us. And, and as we transform the way we think, just the very actions that we partake of can be godly actions because we're renewing our mind. It's no longer us trying to get peace, trying to get joy, trying to get victory. We're walking in that as a daily way of life. Uh, Audrey uh, asked this on Facebook, and this goes right along with what you were just saying, and I think this is so important. He, she says this, despite all my efforts, I always find myself in sin. I am a hard-hearted person as well. I feel so tired and disappointed in myself. What should I do? Well, <laughs> you want to go first? Well, you, I, I will just say this. It, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Whatever you set your mind on, that's the way you're walking. And so I would just ask you, Audrey, and anyone else that's uh, maybe in the same scenario, you know, if you're finding yourself constantly in sin, that means there's this part of you that's focusing on the things of this world. And those things get stirred up, and it's kind of like this appetite, and that appetite only gets, gets bigger. Yeah. Right, and so the thing is, the, the Bible actually talks about abide in me and I'll abide in you, and you will produce much fruit. So there's this direct correlation to what you're abiding in. You know, what are you spending your time watching, doing, listening to, who are you around? And some people say, well, that sounds like a lot of works. No, it's actually when we have salvation and we have this relationship with God, He actually helps us make these determining decisions. Yeah. And we say, you know what, I'm not going to put junk in me anymore because I'm, I'm worth more than that. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm not going to let these influences be around me because it's corrupting. It's corrupting me in a way and giving me excuses just to be in the flesh when God's actually called me higher. Yeah. That's not works. That's a call guys, to get out of this world and into something that's these promises and it's a reflection of who you really are. And that actually, when you spend time with the Lord, that actually starts to soften your heart. And I would say this as well. Thank you so much for being open and honest in that. Um, it goes back to what we were sharing in the very beginning and yeah. really the title of this message is Walk After the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. You know, your flesh is not getting better. If you focus on your flesh and trying not to sin, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fall into frustration, you're gonna fall into more yeah. condemnation because you'll never have the strength in your flesh to stop. But when you put that behind you and when you go back to the Word, you discover, you know, the Word is only work, and, and, and this is something that I'm going through as well, the Word is only work when we're trying to obtain something in the Word, but when we're, when you go and you, you open up a treasure chest and you're discovering what's in the treasure chest, it becomes fun. It can, becomes a, a delight. It becomes a joy. But if you're trying to get a hold of the treasure chest, that's when it becomes work. I tell you, the word is the treasure chest that already belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And so don't focus on stopping to the sin. Focus on your relationship with God. Focus on discovering what does the word declare over your life. And then you'll start walking in victory because you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Yeah. I just want to address, we have just uh, a minute left here, Jerusha and a, another um, sweet uh, lady here um, talked about just as far as um, cancer and just things that are going, this says faith filled on chat, you asked this, and just how do, how do you walk in faith? How do you get to this place of, you know, knowing that you're healed? And I'll just say this, you know, this whole walking after the spirit applies to everything. 
you know, the, the, whether just diagnosed with breast cancer or struggling with bone cancer and the different things and just anyone that's going through any sickness, I'll just tell you this, that the flesh will try to tell you exactly that everything is, you know, that you're sick, the symptoms are real, um, you know, the, the screaming spouse, the whatever, all those things, the enemy's gonna try to tell you that those things are real. But then this walking after the spirit is, you know, we always tell people, when people say, well, who, I, who am I in the spirit? This is actually a mirror. The Bible talks about this is a mirror. When you look into it, it shows you who you are. And so when this Bible is telling you that you are healed, this word, this walking after this, right, is more powerful than what your symptoms are going through and the pain or the frustration or anything that's happening in your body. And then that's where we have to say to our flesh, and this is, this is really when, I, when, when we talk about walking in the spirit, this just happened with my sister, you know, with COVID and she was on a ventilator. Walking after the spirit was saying, I am not going to listen to what I'm hearing, what we're seeing, what we're feeling, what people are declaring but we're walking after spirit and we're declaring life and we're declaring peace and we're with thanksgiving and you are making a choice to do something of the word over what the natural life says. You're saying, no, I'm gonna focus on that no matter the distractions of all these other things over here, I'm going to set the priority on what the word is saying and I'm going to let it come out of my mouth. And so I would just really encourage those that are going through any kind of difficulty, any kind of thing that is just living in this world is throwing your way the distractions is that hiding these word in your heart. And this is what I wanna say, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for putting the word, listening to this teaching. But again, we can inspire, but your, you get this invitation to open up the word of God, see the love of God for you, see who, that you are righteous, see that you have this inheritance and look at it and say, yes, I'm going to believe that. That is how you walk after the spirit. Amen, I'll tell you, there's so much more that we could say about Amen. that. Um, the reality is, is that uh, we do have an enemy that's going to come, come, come at us. That's going to try to do things to us. It's going to try to kill us. Uh, the, the Bible says, John 10, 10, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give life and life in abundance. Abundance. And so I just really encourage you, if, you are, if you are struggling with something in the flesh, uh, um, with a physical ailment, with cancer, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. please get a hold of our prayer ministers at 719-635-1111. Let them pray with you. Let them direct you to some amazing materials because there's yeah. one thing I, we know for sure is that God wants you well. And Jesus paid the price for every single Amen. sickness to deliver so that we could walk free from that sickness, free from bondage, the bondage of sin. And yeah. so get a hold of us. Let, let our prayer ministers Amen. direct you to, the, to, to that, those proper resources. And just want to say thank you so much um, from Carrie and I that you joined us this Amen. evening, Amen. Uh, whatever time it might be in your world. Uh, mm -hmm. We truly do understand that the Word of God holds yeah. all the answers. And so as you invest into yourself into the Word of God, you're truly going to discover the freedom that God has for you. Amen. And so we love you and appreciate you. And I would reach out to our prayer ministers. We talked about spirit, soul, and body tonight. Uh, this, uh, this book on hardness of heart. We just have so many resources. I'm going to encourage you, take the time to hide the word in your heart. If it's something you need to listen to again, you listen to it again. If you need to listen to it again, you listen to it Amen. again. You know, if you need to shut off the TV and put on the word and put on worship, do those things because it'll cause your heart to be sensitive to the things of the Lord. And you'll start to see yourself just uh, even Andrew's book on effortless change, you start to fall in love with the Lord. You start to understand how He sees you Amen. and truly you start to be set free from all these different things that you may be struggling with. So we're excited about this process, this journey of the Word and God's love over you today. So God bless you. Thank you. Join us tomorrow morning, Wednesday, early morning. Barry, uh, Daniel. Daniel Bennett is going to be joining you. He's an amazing teacher and he's got some awesome things he's gonna share with you tomorrow. So God bless and have a great day. Karis Bible College will help you discover who you are in Christ and lead you to a deeper understanding of your God-given calling and purpose. There are some of you here wondering about, should I do this? If you have a desire to be here, it's because God put that desire in your heart. To learn more about Karis Bible College, come to Campus Days. Meet Karis instructors and sit under the Word of God. 
Join us for Campus Days, April 6th through the 8th in Woodland Park, Colorado. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 